Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing synaptic vesicle fusion. Okay, so so far what we have seen is the formation of a core snare complex. So we've seen how uh, NSEC1 slash MUNK18 binds to the syntaxin 1 protein when it's in the closed conformation and helps it to assemble with SNAP25 um, to form these sort of pre-snare complexes. Then what happens is synaptobrevin 2 comes along and then through the ionic interactions at the zero ionic layer and also this zipper mechanism where the alpha helices intertwine with one another, you form this coarse snare complex. Now, you don't just form one of these at membranes. Instead, what you do is you form multiple. So I'll draw another one here to make the picture nicely symmetric. So here's our synaptobrevin 2. Oops, here's our SNAP25 here, providing two alpha helices. And then syntaxin 1 comes off and gives its um, triple helix over here. Right, so let me move this up. Okay, and then you've got the NSEC1 slash MUNK18 protein bound right at the end down here. Okay, so let me add some color on this at the moment because it looks awful at the moment. So in Vivid purple here, we have our NSEC1 protein slash MUNK18, okay? So that's NSEC1 slash MUNK18. And here is syntaxin 1, so here's the transmembrane region of syntaxin 1. Here's the snare motif, and then we come up into this triple helix, which is bound to the NSEC1 slash MUNK18, okay? And here... These are the two alpha helices supplied by the SNAP25 protein here, which are interacting with the snare motif of syntaxin 1. And then finally, synaptobrevin 2 is this orange protein here, again with a transmembrane region and an alpha helice, which is um, interacting in this core snare complex. So we've now got these two core snare complexes, uh, which are holding the uh, presynaptic, the synaptic vesicle, sorry, uh, to the presynaptic membrane. So here's our synaptic vesicle filled with neurotransmitter. Now, there's one more protein that we need to put on this diagram to make the picture complete, basically. And to give the motivation for this protein, uh, we need to understand something about snare complexes like this. Snare complexes are not just used in neurotransmission. They are used uh, all over the place within cells. So whenever you have a vesicle in a cell that needs to fuse with another membrane, for instance, if you've got a vesicle going uh, from the ER to the Golgi, so carrying proteins from the endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi, uh, then uh, it's going to have to fuse with the Golgi membrane. And this is carried out through interactions between snare proteins. Different snare proteins as are seen at the uh, synaptic um, neurotransmitter release, uh, but uh, snare proteins nonetheless. And when they form these core snare complexes, which are very, very similar to this one here, um, basically, the formation of that coarse snare complex causes the fusion of the vesicle with the plasma membrane, i.e. when these coarse snare complexes intertwine up, you can imagine them zipping up, and what's going to happen? It's going to pull this membrane of the synaptic vesicle closer and closer and closer to the plasma membrane, and that's going to then trigger the fusion of the synaptic vesicle membrane with the plasma membrane. So you can imagine why this is going to be sufficient to get fusion of a synaptic vesicle with the presynaptic membrane. Okay, so we need to try and understand uh, what is it that stops these uh, snare complexes that we find in um, axon terminals from actually fusing this synaptic vesicle with the presynaptic membrane. Okay, and it's a protein known as complexin. So I will draw in the complexin protein, the final uh, protein that's really important in the formation of these complexes. So I will give it in some color. What color should I use? I think I'll use a vivid purple, the same as NSEC1 or slash MUNK18. So here is the complexin protein. Now there are two complexin proteins, but they act 
actually do pretty much the same thing. So there are complexin 1 and complexin 2, but we'll just label this up as complexin. Okay, now, if we again look at the um, arrangement of these four alpha helices, so remember I drew this picture of if, the, if we chop through this coarse now complex, uh, i.e. sort of take a transverse section, what we'll find is here's the synaptobrevin 2, here's the syntaxin 1, and here are the two alpha helices provided by SNAP25, like so. So you've got these four, and they sort of square like this. What we find is that this complexin alpha helix, which is again an alpha helix sitting alongside these alpha helices, it sort of sits in between synaptobrevin and syntaxin 1. So it sits in between synaptobrevin 2 and syntaxin 1. And complexin's role seems to be in stopping these synaptic, these, uh, sorry, these synaptic snare complexes from fusing the synaptic vesicle with the presynaptic membrane prior to an action potential arriving. So it appears to have this sort of clamping function. So it appears to act as a clamp protein and seems to stop these core snare complexes from actually bringing this uh, synaptic vesicle membrane close enough to the plasma membrane that the synaptic vesicle is actually going to fuse with the plasma membrane. So overall, this now is the machinery which docks this synaptic vesicle at the presynaptic membrane. Okay, so you have these four free snare proteins together with the NSEC1 slash MUNK18 and the complexin, which is preventing the uh, core snare complex from actually fusing the two membranes together. And in the next video, what we'll start to look at is how, when an action potential arises, it actually triggers um, the fusion of this synaptic vesicle with the presynaptic membrane.